You are still watching Ways. World Malaria Day is an occasion to highlight the need for the continued investment and sustained political commitment for malaria prevention and control. It was instituted by WHO member states during the World Health Assembly of 2007. <laughs> World Malaria Day. Malaria is something that we battle in this country. I literally have <laughs> malaria every month. Yeah. Every month. I have me ever, Honestly, I have me ever every month. I get malaria every month. I don't know how. That's too frequent. Though. I don't know why. But I just know that I, I have to treat for malaria every month. Once I start feeling, I just, I get this um, I sure it's not pains in my, nah. I know it's because the minute I take a tech quick, I'm fine. I get better. A tech quick? Yeah. A tech quick. I, I, I can't take, I can't take it. Anything that has chloroquine? I don't know. But this one doesn't have chloroquine. It's just. But that, I, I don't know if it's a tech quick or a tech quick. <laughs> I one, like one time. One time I tried, you tried it, it, and my whole system. Shut I was down. like, who? I don't even know whether it was malaria mm -hmm. or now. <laughs> like I was, it was more. It was a very horrible period for me. After that day, I said, I think I'm going to always test before I yes, even go for yeah. you know just buying over the counter drugs. But yeah, well, that's serious. I mean, it's good to know that there's a day that is dedicated to um, malaria because I I know that back in the day, malaria was something that used to actually kill yeah. people. And I know abroad, you can be quarantined for having malaria. Um, malaria, yeah. But yeah, we're glad that at least they recognize it and then there are measures that are taken, right, to treat it. So it's no longer that disease in quotes that cannot be treated there are mm. now, um, now medications for prevention and also to control it as well mm. all right um okay let me start with easy what did you find in the news okay um my was in the news what actually got my attention was um a young man who is not in nigeria mm. and he is actually based in um the east he, I think, in Korea, basically, and he was. His name is. His name is um, Saint Von Colucci, and he dies at the age of 22 after undergoing 12 plastic surgeries to look like BTS singer Jimin. Um, it's it's so sad because he passed on on the 23rd of uh, April at South Korea, a South Korean hospital, due to complications which are, arose from the procedure he did uh, previously. Now, this story actually resonated with me because um, we have had issues of people wanting to look like other people. I'm not against people who really are interested in having uh, a facelift or having something done to their bodies to make them look better or feel better. But however, there are certain things that they should also bear in mind. God made you in such a unique way. I, I, let me go the religious way first. God made you in such a unique way that if he didn't make you to look like you, you can't be anybody else. Okay? And this young man, based on the fact that he's an actor, he had challenges having jobs back there in Korea because he looked like a Western um, individual instead of uh, an Easterner, basically, or a Korean. Korean. So probably he's of mixed blood or something. And this really affected his self-esteem and he had a lot of insecurities personally as an individual. Now, this come, brings me to the social um, ethics that governs people. Now, this young man is... 22, just 22. How can you undergo 12 surgeries within that short period of time and there was no way on your face to look like an, uh, a musician? <laughs> it is so sad that he had to you know, pass on from this procedure. Only God knows the problems or psychological effects he must have had with other people, maybe some sort of depression, or he felt he wasn't good enough, or he felt that people didn't appreciate him for himself because he needed to look like a particular person to get um, validation from the public. Uh. Now he's dead, he died alone. 
Nobody is there to go down with him or go down six feet with him because he brought this on himself. I'm saying this because of our young Nigerians who are probably going through one challenge or the other and they feel that they have to do something or they feel they're not good enough, they feel inadequate for some particular reason, that they should just remember one thing, that the ultimate artist who is God made them in such a wonderful way that they should appreciate themselves for being who they are. It's as simple as that. I mean, it's pretty disturbing to see this because, I mean, from the story, he himself is an actor, right? So why was he trying to look like a singer? Another celebrity, but yeah, we all have different issues. Now. Like I think uh, he tried to look like a celebrity because uh, he he looked like a Westerner. Mm. Okay, so because of that, he wasn't getting enough jobs. So he now decided to go undergo this procedure. Also, because he felt his jawline wasn't good enough, wasn't properly structured enough, and he had personal insecurities that he couldn't handle. We, this was um, stated by his manager. So he had to go through these um, procedures to make himself look like a singer. It is well with his soul. Jennifer, what did you find from us? R. Kelly to serve 30 year jail term in North Carolina prison. I mean, if you've been following the R. Kelly um, story, mm. you know that he was um, convicted of um, some charges which involved child pornography, child enticement, sexual abuse of women, and um, there were lots of evidence against him. Um, they had um, given him a jail term previously, but it had been increased to like 30 years jail term. So now it's like confirmed. This is what he would actually serve. And I'm happy that justice has been served. Has been served. Yeah, I mean, it's sad. It's R. Kelly. He's supposed to be a living legend. But yeah, look at what has become of him. Because I don't know what's going to happen to him in 30s. I don't know if he's going to be able to leave, survive 30s, or if he's going to get parole. But then we'll see how that goes, right? Mary, what did you find personally? Yes. Okay. My headline reads, Electricity, new reps bill threatens 10 billion Naira investment. There are indications that the 10 billion Naira additional investment occasioned by the proposed emergence of Nigeria's Electricity Act could become a mirage due, main, due mainly to some anti-investment provisions in the House of Representatives Electric Power Sector Reform Act, EPS. RA. In its version obtained by Vanga, the House of Representatives imposed some charges, including 2% on profit of all renewable energy service companies in Nigeria executing renew renewable energy projects. There is also a 5% charge on every kilowatt per hour of energy sold and carbon tax at the rate of 5% on pump price of petroleum products sold by every marketer across Nigeria. Um, I'm not really sure I understand what this means, but it just seems like a hike and in electricity tariff. Yeah, in electricity tariff. And it's just sad because we're already suffering. And I don't know if there's a foil scarcity because yeah, the there is. Station, yeah, 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 there is. I mean, Why are we going through this again? again? Again, like it was so bad, <sighs> you know. We've, we've not even fully recovered from we've it. Not. Not, you know, and it's the cues are back again. So I don't really understand what's going country. on. Like I mean, there have also been complaints. I, I'm, I don't think it's just my side where people have been saying that uh, the, light. the light situation has actually been, is been bad. bad. Yeah, yeah. Really, it's really, really bad. Has, well, for bad. us, it hasn't been. We've had like three days straight. Straight? So, I mean, ours used to be really good but these days is is really it's something else yeah i know my parents complained though my mom has been talking about how the light has been epileptic in their area but i don't know for us we've had light i don't know they just took the light this morning very briefly and then it came back we've had lights interesting mm -hmm. i've not had lights since then yeah. and that's how like it happens that way the mm -hmm. only time they give me probably frequent lights or probably the lights is for a long time maybe saturdays and sundays but wow. even these days this weekend yeah. it's has been very unstable. 
I don't know how else. Well, let's not even go into all we'll of these other problems in Nigeria. We'll <laughs> As usual, we will. We'll okay, so my news um, domestic worker steals ex employer's checkbook and withdraws 2.5 million naira. Huh? I saw this and I asked myself so many questions. So, first of all, how was he able to sign the signature? So, apparently, he forged the signature. The Lagos State Police Command has arraigned one Victor Williams for a Yaba magistrate court for allegedly stealing a bank check belonging to his ex employer, Alajadi Kunle Moshud. He was accused of also forging Moshud's signature on the check and withdrawing over 2 million naira from the account. Williams was arraigned before the magistrate's PE Unwaka on three counts of stealing and forgery on Thursday. C. The things that domestic workers can do to you. Eh? They can mess you <gasps> up. They can really mess so you up. So now I'm not saying, so, okay. Because I want to I, I want to believe that. So his boss probably got so comfortable with him. And then maybe we'll send him to the bank sometimes to draw money. And I'm sure the guy was deliberately learning his signature and whatnot. And that's how come he was able to forge the signature and then withdraw such amount of money from his accounts. Why, that's the why height why of wickedness. I hear things like that and I never understand it. Anyway, our conversation for tonight is one that's very captivating and I can't wait for us to dive right into it. But then before we do that, let's go for a break. See you after the break. <laughs> 